Welcome back. You've just joined us. You're watching the News at 10 live on Channel's television, reaching you from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Inspector General of Police assures on return of last Dubchi schoolgirl in Boko Haram captivity any time from now as he tours schools in the northeast. The Nigerian army reopens major expressway linking Meduguri and Bama towns after four years following capture by Boko Haram terrorists. Police threatens to declare Senator Dino Milaye wanted for failing to honor invitation at its Kogi State Command. Senator Milaye says that his life is in danger in Kogi. And protests hit U.S. cities and parts of Europe as students lead rallies to demand tougher gun control laws. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you. And on ChannelsYouTube.com forward slash ChannelsWeb, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from your respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Youths in Plateau State have gathered in just the state capital to organize a prayer session over insecurity. They are asking the face of God to put an end to the incessant attacks that have claimed several lives and properties in the past three weeks. At the event, the Archbishop of Just Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Benjamin Kwashi, urged the government to listen to the cries of the people by providing adequate security. From all unrighteousness. In Plateau State, north-central Nigeria, youths are seeking divine intervention to bring an end to the security challenges bedeviling their communities. Things are turning against us unless you help us. Dressed in black outfits to symbolize the solemn mood of the prayer gathering, they are crying out to God to heal their land and protect them against continuous attacks that have left several dead. At this open field, the Archbishop of Just Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Benjamin Kwashi, leads a moving prayer session. These people seem to be elusive, but God, you know them by name. You know the people arming them. This evening we come to you to beg you, God, dislodge all their plans. As day turned to night, the prayer session transitioned into a memorial, with each person clutching a candle. Leaving their original meeting place, they began a procession through some streets in the state capital, terminating at the old airport roundabout. The candles are planted in memory of those killed in the attacks. We are crying to God, but we want government to hear. We want the earth to listen. If the earth and government refuse to listen, God has heard. We so much believe that God who is in heaven, who created government, who created all of us that are in, in this world, that God will hear us and he will stop all this thing that is going on on the plateau. And having covered the divine realm, the coming days and weeks will be crucial in measuring the effectiveness of this gathering. A former chief of army staff and minister of defense, retired General Theophilus Danjuma, has accused the Nigerian army, the military rather, of not being sincere in fighting insurgency and other criminal elements threatening the peace of the country. General Danjuma, who spoke in Jalingo, said the state capital, against the backdrop of the continued killings in parts of the country, also blamed the military for what he referred to as ethnic cleansing in Taraba State and other riverine communities in Nigeria in this state is being is under assault there is an attempt at ethnic cleansing in this state and of course in all 
the riverine state of Nigeria. We must resist it. We must stop it. Every one of us must rise up. The armed forces are not neutral. They collude. They collude. They collude with the armed bandits. They kill people, kill Nigerians. They facilitate their movements. They cover them. In the meantime, the Nigerian army has promised to investigate the allegations made by General Theophilus Danjuma accusing the military of complicity in the attacks in Taraba and other places. Spokesman of Defense Information, Brigadier General John Agim, told Channels Television that General Danjuma is a well-respected retired military officer whose views are viewed with seriousness. He added that any officer found to have been compromised in the course of their duties in the areas of operation will be dealt with accordingly. Moving on to other stories now, 2019 elections may be just about a year away, but political parties are beginning to get the tone of their preparations. In River State, for instance, the upcoming local government election slated for June this year appears to be one step in that direction as the state governor, Nyesam Wike, today convened an expanded stakeholders meeting. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Erey, reports. Politics is beginning to come alive in River State. As the state governor, Yesom Wike, in company of the People's Democratic Party national chairman and some leaders in the state arrive for what the ruling party in the state calls an expanded stakeholders meeting of key members from the over 300 wards and 23 local council areas in the state. Interestingly, the All Progressives Congress member representing Tai Eleme Oibo federal constituency in the House of Representatives is also here. This election is not for any particular leader. The governor then sends a message on the local council polls scheduled for June. I am monitoring everybody. Do you understand me? I know what is going on in so many local government uh, areas. I have been seeing alignment and realignment. Even those who are not talking before, they are grouping together against other people. You know, we work. He also has some words for the women. Whether we like it or not, we must have women to represent. They cannot be 319 words or 319 men. It is not possible. We cannot have 23 chairmen, 23 men. It's not possible. We cannot have 23 vice chairmen, 23 uh, men. We must encourage our women. Our focus from the national level is on two things. For the national chairman of the PDP, the party is poised to do things in a different way. The epileptic power supply to the north bank axis of Makodi metropolis on the side of River Benway is causing unease among residents and key public institutions in that area. The rector of the College of Advanced and Professional Studies in Makodi and other participants at the town hall meeting with the Just Electricity Distribution Company lament how life and economic activities has been crippled. This appears to be the resolve of residents and representatives of key public institutions at the Just Electrical Distribution Company's town hall meeting to resolve the six months long power outage in the North Bank axis of Makodi Bayou State. Having agreed to restore power supply within one week, the meeting shifts to the River Bainway Bridge for an on the spot assessment. 
At both ends of the bridge, the conveyor cables have been cut off by vandals. Some of the residents suggest possible solutions to the problem. Now we have, we're trying to come to a common uh, ground to rectify the problem. But our major concern is, as a people, as residents, is that look, if you look at the bridge, it's supposed to be a pedestrian bridge. You can't walk on this bridge anymore. It's completely damaged. We do not want cables to pass under this bridge. We want Jade to look for an alternative. We are flying cables across the bridge so that we will not we will totally and completely eliminate the issue of vandalization. The truth about it is that they too had their challenges. The challenges is that they gave it to a contractor and the contractor has abandoned site. So what do we do from here? How to get a contractor is another big deal of problem. Who gave him the job? At what level have they paid him? That's the challenge we're having. But we have met and we said we'll go all out as a community to get this done. To be very sincere, the highest revenue generated in, in, in Makodi or in Benway State comes from Northern. The contractor appears to have thought of this by erecting this high tension mast, but soon abandoned site. The cause of this for our fellow is mainly the failure of our cables on the bridge. That is the major cause of the power failure. Number one, the cable itself is age. Number two, vandals have not even allowed us to successfully restore the felt portion of the cable. Though we're enjoying fishing and mining activities along the River Benue, the over two million residents in the North Bank Axis have to cope with the inadequate power supply. To truly appreciate this, Channel's Television visits this rector who leased the challenges of running an academic institution without power supply for six months. Students need to even uh, have access to power supply so that they can do their academic works. For instance, in the library, when they get to the library, they are bound to photocopy some materials. And that is not just all. If you get to the library, you need to have uh, the fans on so that you can have a conducive, conducive atmosphere for studies. The interim solution agreed on at the town hall meeting is to fix the vandalized cables and increase surveillance to guard against theft while pursuing the alternative of flying the cables across the River Benue. In many parts of the world, people are facing crises of water shortage. While climate change is blamed for much of this, activities of humans with regards to the usage of water is also a major factor. In commemoration of this year's World Water Day, some groups and officials in Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja, are sensitizing residents on the need to conserve water. The theme for this year is Nature for Water and explores nature-based solutions to the water challenges we face in the 21st century. Kayla Megwa reports. The world is going through a water crisis. And according to the World Resources Institute, the reasons for this include climate change, population increase, depletion in groundwater, poor water infrastructure, and water wastage, among others. Today, 2.1 billion people lack access to safe drinking water. 4.5 billion people lack safely managed sanitation services. More than 340,000 children under five die annually from diarrhea as a result of poor sanitation, poor hygiene, or unsafe drinking water. That's almost a thousand children per day. What are some of the practices we can imbibe to reduce water wastage? You want to wash a car, then you just put up your hose and open your tap to be flushing and um, wasting. You can use your bucket. Somebody wants to have a shower in his, in his or her own house. You just enter the bedroom. As you enter, you own the shower. I mean, no, you know you are wasting a lot of water. So this enlightenment that we are pushing forward will make people to know that you don't need to waste water. These core members and students from the Government Day Secondary School, Duse Alaji Abuja, are on excursion. They're here to view the main water source of the nation's capital in commemoration of World Water Day 2018. One of the goals we are advocating for in the 17 goals is clean water and sanitation, which is goal six. We are telling people that their actions 
Nations and Inaction have a way of improving the water quality of water so that we can have enough and also to conserve water. It's important that we educate the children, bring them to the reservoir of where FCC actually feeds the, um, where FCC actually gets its water for Abuja residents and to show them why water is important and why they actually protect water. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources, under its minister, Mr. Suleiman Adamu Kazauri, is responsible for large water resources development projects and water allocation between states. The ministry houses 11 River Basin Development Authority, responsible for planning and developing water resources, irrigation work, and the collection of hydrological, hydrogeological data. They also provide water in bulk to cities from dams. Each plant at the Lower Usuma Dam has a capacity to process 240 million liters of water a day, which, if well treated, is sufficient to meet the needs of residents of Abuja. Ab when the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's taxpayer data rises to 17 million as the Ministry of Finance prepares to publish list of items exempt from value-added tax by the end of March. That's some business news. Join us again.